A lot of you guys have been watching my content for JJK as far as the shorts go, so I want to see if you guys are also interested in watching spoiler videos. So we are going to be talking about the new chapter of JJK, JJK 240, and thanks to Miyamura and everyone responsible for the leaks, but let's get right into it. So chapter 240 of Jujutsu Kaisen is called Baka Survivor Survive, and it actually begins a little bit before Takaba walked up to Kenjaku's area at the end of last chapter, with us seeing a meeting happening between Angel and various other characters that we've been watching watch the Gojo vs. Sakuna fight this entire time. Angel Angel asks what if Kenjaku's side ambushes the sorcerers when Gojo loses, and Akari says that he wouldn't want that to happen because their hands will be full dealing with Sukuna. And Angel having a little more information than everyone else here because, you know, they are a past sorcerer and probably had some dealings with Kenjaku in the past or at least heard about him, says that even if they don't get ambushed and barely win against Sukuna, it'll still be hard to fight against Kenjaku. As we see the mouth on Hana's face explaining this to everyone who's sitting in a stairway together before the Gojo and Sukuna fight even begins. Kusakabe, who's become like a a really good voice of reason and shows just how much he knows about the world of Jujutsu in these kind of side commentary sections, says that they can catch Kenjaku off guard and get rid of him with Maki. And that actually is a really sound strategy considering that we know exactly what Kenjaku's plan is to kind of keep track of all the sorcerers in Japan. And knowing how Maki's heavenly restriction works and the fact that she has absolutely no cursed energy, it would kind of make sense to have her sneak up on Kenjaku the same way that she snuck up on Sukuna during his fight against Yuji at the end of the last arc. However, Kusakabe also realizes that it would be kind of ridiculous to split their strengths before they even fight Sukuna, because again, this conversation is happening before Gojo even went out there. However, it's at this point where Angel shares a really interesting idea, saying she recommends sending Takaba against Kenjaku. Hakari, Yuta, and Kusakabe all start sweating when they hear Takaba's name, because I guess it's like the King Engine, right? Like, they're they're just all just horrified of him. But no, in actuality, they actually doubt Angel's recommendation, with Hakari and Kusakabe both voicing out loud why they think that's not really the best idea. I mean, it's Takaba. However, Angel seems to have completely figured out Takaba's curse technique, and she says there might be a bad influence on Takaba's curse technique on what I'm about to say, so please don't say this to anyone, even Takaba, as she begins to explain exactly what Takaba's curse technique is to everyone to try and convince them to allow Takaba to go fight Kenjaku alone. And whatever she said to them here, it seems like it was convincing enough, because we know that Takaba did end up getting to Kenjaku, who we see on the bottom of this page, reacting to something that Takaba is doing. And that's because on the next page, we can see that the fight between Kenjaku and Takaba has gotten really weird, with Kenjaku attacking Takaba with some really strong centipede curses, and Takaba making a really funny face as he lets him kind of pull on his eyebrows and his eyelids a little bit and just kind of jokes around. And yes, I am going to be using Gear 5 images of Luffy instead of Takaba every single time here, because one, I can't show the spoiler panels without being copyright striked. I mean, that's just kind of normal. That's common sense. And two, there's not a lot of images of Takaba out there. You go look for them. I mean, there's like four colored images of him. I I'm sorry. He's Toon Force Luffy for the the rest of this video. And just like Luffy, most people have absolutely no idea how he does what he does, with Kenjaku realizing that his attack against Takaba using his curse technique was completely rejected. Takaba then makes Kenjaku wear an American flag bandana that looks exactly like Bandit Keith's from Yu-Gi-Oh! And in English, he says, you can't win against me. Kenjaku takes the bandana and the shades off because again, he looks exactly like Bandit Keith and that's a little ridiculous. And he thinks that Takaba's curse technique must be about creating phenomenons where he forcefully materializes his imagination because again, that bandana and shades literally just came out of nowhere. I mean, Takaba just materialized them with his weird reality warping curse technique. It's at this point where Kenjaku starts to run out of options, or at least all the options that he normally would take in a battle like this. And I mean, when would you ever really get in a battle like this? But as Kenjaku stands there with his thousands of years of information against fighting curse users, he realizes that none of that is going to be relevant when fighting Takaba because this guy is a complete anomaly. But even still, Kenjaku kind of gives Takaba his credit here, saying, I didn't expect such a player to exist, however, there's always a weak point or a hole in a curse technique. From here, we have a little bit of a yap off between Takaba and Kenjaku in the middle of the chapter, with Takaba going off about how he won first place in a tournament that assigns a number one solo comedian in Japan. And in the middle of that, he calls Kenjaku a fishy smelling monk. However, during this exchange, Takaba also asks Kenjaku why he does all of this stuff, and Kenjaku is confused saying, what do you mean by this stuff? With Takaba saying like, why do you make people kill each other and combine people and do all this stuff and even try to make monsters? Like, what, what is the point of doing all of that? Kenjaku then answers because it seems fun and says, this is the second time that I've talked about this today, so let me just cut it short. I guess it's all about intellectual curiosity. It's at this point where a flashlight appears over Takaba's head, and he says, so if there's something more funny than doing this, you wouldn't have to do all of these atrocities, right? And Kenjaku then says, maybe, with Takaba then laughing at him saying, huh, it's written all over your face. 
your face screams, make me laugh. So in an effort to get Kenjaku to laugh as hard as he possibly can, Takabo looks Kenjaku dead on his face as Kenjaku looks really like, actually kind of worried for a second here. And Takabo pulls out his final secret technique, his funniest joke that he's ever used. And he's even used it before in the series. That's how you know how funny it is. He says, don't marry me. I don't want you as my wifey. Making a really, 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 really bad Wi-Fi joke in front of Kenjaku, who is absolutely not impressed. And in fact, actually spends two entire pages giving Takaba a lesson on why that joke doesn't work and what he could possibly do to improve it. And we even see them go to some like weird classroom where it looks like Kenjaku is a teacher standing in front of Takaba because oftentimes we see weird scenes where Kenjaku is just kind of in an entirely different place, like a movie theater or a bar. And I think it's either some sort of weird representation or symbolism in this case, or maybe Maybe Takaba really just thought that if he's getting lectured by Kenjaku, it would be funnier if he was in like a more teacher student kind of role in this situation. Either way, for a second, they're inside some sort of weird classroom before Kenjaku finally lands a solid hit on Takaba, elbowing him straight in the stomach and sending him flying far away through the forest. As Kenjaku has now figured out that the condition for Takaba's curse technique is the user's confidence and certainty. So he's not 100% sure what the curse technique is itself, but he knows to a certain extent how it's active and that shows just how smart Kenjaku is, right? Because if you can't figure out someone's curse technique, at least figure out how it's activated and try to get around it that way. So Takaba is sent flying away, but he's enraged at Kenjaku and he says, shut the hell up. You're just an amateur that hasn't even been on stage before. Even if you don't find it funny, it doesn't matter if other people find it funny. But Kenjaku just makes a kind of confused and annoyed face looking around saying, there's no one else here. So I, I am everyone else. This frustrates Takaba who says, okay, let's play a game. You lose if you laugh. And he makes a funny face at Kenjaku, but is stunned when Kenjaku counters Takaba with an even funnier face, where he puts his tongue above his nose and even lifts his head a little bit so you can see the brain hiding under his skull. And this exact face is something that we've seen Yuji do in the series already, so it's funny to see that, yeah, like mother slash father, like son. As Takaba loses his battle of making Kenjaku laugh, he gets punched again in the face and gets sent flying through the forest again, this time breaking down a number of trees as he hits the ground. Around, and Takaba really starts to despair here and starts losing his cool as he thinks Kenjaku is funnier than him. We see Takaba crawling along the ground and kind of like looking at himself, encouraging himself and saying, it's okay, I'm also funny, right? Like I'm funny. But as he's encouraging himself saying, you know, I can do this, I'm funny, everything's okay. He crawls and crawls and crawls and crawls until he sees the body of Hazanoki on the ground, who's the guy that we saw last chapter throwing his tooth at Kenjaku and blowing himself up repeatedly. And upon seeing this body laying in the grass, who's obviously another victim of Kenjaku, Takaba's heart sinks again, where he really starts to think, can I do this? Kenjaku menacingly looks down on Takaba and says, what's wrong? Laugh. You're a comedian, aren't you? And Takaba thinks that this isn't laughable as he continues to lose his confidence and thinks, wait, why am I even a comedian in the first place? This brings us to the very end of the chapter with us not having a break next week. So hopefully you guys are gonna join me again for another spoiler video. I try to get these out overnight as soon as possible to be the first person to get these spoiler videos up. But I am really looking forward to Takaba versus Kenjaku continuing. Again, I like how this kind of brings my two favorite genres of movie, horror and comedy together for a clash in this manga. And I really like how Gege Akutami always finds ways to just kind of draw what he wants to, right? Like he probably wanted to fight between a really serious character and a really too Toon Forcey kind of jokey character. So we just created Takaba to have this exact fight happen. And I've been a big fan of Takaba ever since the narrator was comparing him to Gojo and saying all this crazy stuff about him. And I really like Reality Warper. So I'm hoping that Takaba doesn't lose this fight against Kenjaku. But when you go up against the main villain of a series, I mean, you kind of have to lose the fight, right? So I do expect Takaba to lose this battle, but we are going to learn something interesting about Kenjaku, I think, in the meantime. So check back next week. I also uploaded my spoiler video for My Hero Academia Chapter 4. Five. Click that and see if you're interested. And if not, I've got other JJK shorts. I've got like literally hundreds of them that I've uploaded over the course of the last month or two. So check those out. And this is Vocal Pineapple. Hopefully you guys will join me again and peace.